and some of you don't. And, and you have to give a lot of money today to get a tax write-up. I want to tell you that. I mean, I found that out. So I'm doing the papers, and on several of them, I don't know why I did it. See, God starts a long time ago working on your affairs. He didn't start yesterday. Before you were born, he was looking at it. Hallelujah. Come on. That's right. <laughs> he sees from afar. And one of the addresses was on the check, and I don't know why I didn't write it down in my book properly. But I went back and looked again. I said, there's something not right about this man's address. So he had his telephone number on check. So I called him up, and he didn't answer because he gave me a large amount. He's the one with the gold tree. Oh. I told you about it. Oh, yeah. So my friend that was doing it for me, I can trust her. You're actually, if you have a 501, only the three people on your board is to work with all of your paperwork. And, and I want to suggest to all of you, if somebody is counting the money, uh, don't go up to them or don't talk to them, please. Because they're accountable for every name on that check, and no one is to look at the check. No one is to see what somebody else gets. They're just like that. The bank is the same way. If somebody takes the money in from me, they take my receipt and fold it up so nobody can see what's on there. It's just something that is better, okay? So I'm thinking about this, and I said, now, why did I not write this address properly? So I called him. He didn't answer, and I was sharing with Bernie, this is my friend, everything she needed to check on. There's quite a few things. So she calls the man up. Now, listen to this. I didn't feel the address was right, even to the apartment number. This happened twice. Uh, and God just made me sensitive to it, you understand? To save me from running around the block to get it all straightened out. Because sometimes you got to call them back up, run back down there. I'm trying to tell you how to save time. Because time is important today. Your life will never be the same. Never after this last acquittal. It will never be the same. Get it? Before that, it was not the same. But this time, you just look at yourself, and it's not. God's going to mess it all up so we can learn the ways of the Spirit. So my friend calls him, and here's what he said. He said, I'm so glad you called me. He said, because they, and I thought, has he moved? Here he's got this apartment number in Chandler. Has he moved? Is there a lot of apartments there? And he said, I was in this apartment, and something happened to it. And they moved me into another apartment, so my number has changed. And the way he talked, it had been a ball wax. I mean, it's just been very complicated. So when we called him, you know, he hadn't changed the address. Well, I didn't put it in the book anyway. You understand? Mm -hmm. And I didn't. I put part of it in there. His name, Chandler, and the zip code, but I didn't put the street and the numbers, and that's what had been changed. Just that part. <laughs> and there was another one. That, yes, God wants us to be sensitive. Yeah. And that's why when you cry, he listens to the sound of your voice to see if we're whining or if we really need something. Wow. Yes. Wow. He knows you by your voice. So he hears, and he comes on the scene. And I was just thinking a few things a couple of days ago. You know, I was just thinking, Lord, why, why am I not catching this more quickly? And this was with this person, and the next time they call me, I had all this information inside of me, and I don't know where it came from. You understand what I'm saying? So he wants us not to be limited to what we don't know, but who we know. Who are you? If somebody would ask you, who, who are you, what would you say to them? That's a good answer. I'm a child of God, and don't tell them there's more than one. <laughs> one God, and the devil trembles. Hallelujah. I told an Arab person that. Some Christians tell me, you think you can get to heaven more than one man? I said, oh, no, the devil only believes in one, and he trembles. You remember that. Make him God in everything is what I'm saying. Make him God. Identify with him. Thank him for those little things that, you know, you're in a hurry. And he makes all the lights green. You understand? He makes it easy for you so you won't be late. You don't have to apologize or talk forever trying to talk your way out of it. Let God be God. Let him be God. He's in charge. And he doesn't control you, but he leads us. He said, I'll lead you beside the green pastures, and I'll restore everything. Amen. And I love it. And I want to tell you this. I never think about what I'm going to put on when I get up. I let God just drop yeah. it in my spirit. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm hoping I can find it in the closet without a flashlight. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just telling you. That song, 
He makes me so happy. Well, act like a Goonie bird sometimes. I don't really do <laughs> but I'm not I'm telling you. When you get real joy in your soul, you will never be mad very long or upset. You won't. It's just not there. Hallelujah. You've made room for the glory. Yeah. We're making room for the glory and all this sorting out. And the, all these things, if we don't understand it, well, I, I guess God didn't want me to have it. Yes, he did, but he's trying to, He's showing us, trying to show us how to operate and don't be limited on what the Lord can do in your life. So I, I have these all, all day long with my mouth. I thought, why can't life just be smooth? I get in my car, I wonder where it happens. No, he's going to show you the way of the clouds. That's where he's at. He's in the clouds. His ways are in the clouds. He's hidden himself in a secret place. Hallelujah. Yes. Ask the Lord to let one of those clouds come by. Yes. You think I'm silly. You know the song of the little white cloud that cried? How many remember that song? A man named Johnny Ray did that way back in the 50s. He couldn't hear well. But it was, it was, and the little white cloud that cried. And I don't remember it except when God several times was trying to tell me about the little cloud. So I'm singing it one day and I thought, uh-oh, I'm crying, aren't I, Lord? Yeah. I got the message. He said, I'll sing over you with songs of delight and deliverance. Amen. And write down those songs. Oh, well, God did this here. You want a message? Get it out of the clouds. You can do this. I'm trying to tell you that God speaks in foolish ways yes, to confound the wise. Yes, he does. And I caught it that day. I thought, oh, Lord. But he was telling me I was a cloud. Are you hearing me? Amen. And you think, well, I want a greater revelation. Honey, that's a revelation. Amen. That's a secret place of God. What's your secret today? What's your secret today, Lord? Some of you, I'm seeing a vision right now. You got bongo drums inside of you. I just saw them. You got them in your logician. Amen. Bongo drums. You know, that's they communicate in, all through Africa with bongo drums. Right. How many remember that? How many know that? Amen. Yes, they would play the drums over here, and they would hear it for miles to follow the sound to get where they were. Yes. And God wants us to hear the sound. You might hear something and, and uh, oblivious to it, but God is speaking through that sound. Now, a lot of people don't think this is important, but I want to tell you, I've been to 75 nations just by hearing a song. Nobody had to prophesy and said, you're going here or here. And God provided. The credit cards didn't do it. God instantly provided the finances. Come on, he works in marvelous ways. Marvelous ways. And you know, you might say, remember the disciples went to town to get some food? No, Jesus said, I'm going this way. There's a woman over here just well. She's going to be my next evangelist. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> and they come hunting, wanting to know what he was doing. Yeah. Well, just think about him a little bit more. And what I'm saying to you, if you want to release your miracle, if you want to release the answer, some of you haven't caught this yet. You've got to catch these things. You know when that bride throws that bouquet? Every girl that wants to get married is trying to get it. Because it's a... They've proven that whoever gets the bouquet, is she gets married next. Amen. They've proven that. <laughs> I'm not catching any bouquet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> People didn't think of these things. Did you know? Somebody asked me about the wedding vows that they say, do you promise to obey and honor and so forth? God put that in somebody's heart. For the bride. And now people are changing their vows because they don't want to promise and obey. Hallelujah. You get to see these things. That God did it in the beginning. He put the wedding song. He did all this to help people. Yes. Don't make it complicated. Just know, oh, what is God doing? Ruth wrote that song. He's doing what's for eternity. Amen. What's forever. Amen. He's making you the diamond, the jewel, the emerald. He's making you. He said, you're my living stones. There's color in you. I think Hillsong got it before we did. Their color do you see that color convention? I thought, what in the world are they talking about? Start preaching on having a rainbow experience. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, those promises are yay and amen. amen. And it's simple. If you'll tap into it, you've got these people have to get a great revelation that they've had to get in the dictionary to get the answer to. Mm -hmm. He wants you to experience. Yes. When I asked him one time, what was the witty invention? Mm -hmm. Oh my, I wish I hadn't asked that. But the end of that is this. I mean, my cake fell in the oven, the stove was on fire. 
Lost the top off my gas tank in my car. I went to get gas while the cake was in the oven. Let somebody watch it. I came back. They were doing this. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Smoke's coming out of the kitchen. And the cake was for Ruth. She was coming in that day. It was her birthday. We didn't have any more money to buy a cake. Listen, it was like a tragedy. I'm trying to tell you how to make a miracle out of whatever God gives you. And this is what makes you laugh and jump and carry on all the time. Because you've heard from heaven. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And she said, I didn't do it. Like I was going to blame her for it. I said, what happened? She said, well, the stove went off and the cake fell. And all I had was this chunk in the middle. And <laughs> run all down the pan. And I said, oh, Jesus, you can do anything. Help me. Ruth is coming in in two hours. It's her birthday. And I saw two faces of two people. And I called. They were both artists on the campground. I called them up. Listen, I've had this situation. Can you help me? She comes running, scratching the top of her head. She was always doing that. She said, wait a minute, I got an idea. She ran into the freezer, and there was two cakes that we had had frozen. Just two you know, layers. Not used. They were down in these black plastic bags in the bottom of the freezer. So she takes them out, and she puts a ring in both of them. Then we take the cakes that have fallen and put them in the middle. <laughs> Come on. All right. We don't have time to run and buy one of them big cakes. We buy something somebody else makes. Be a genius and do something. It's got some humor and a story and revelation. <laughs> and the other person that I asked if she could help me, she knew how to make a seven-minute icing. Yeah. Honey, I'm going to put this in my book. Hallelujah. We need these things. We need these revelations because... God said it's going to be at hand. That means you're not going to spend your money and roll over town. Wear yourself out before the party. Does anybody hear anything what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah. So we put the seven-minute icing on it. Oh, it was beautiful. But you can see the rainbow in the, in the seven-minute icing. And it was gorgeous. We got it on the table finally. And she's coming through the door at that moment. I said, oh, Jesus, don't let her ask what happened. <laughs> and she said, oh, a beautiful cake. And I went, yeah. She said, what happened? Did the cake fall? <laughs> <laughs> you can't hide. And then she says, you want to feel like you hit the bottom? She says, well, it's OK, because I fast every birthday. Oh. She was going all the way in from Jerusalem. Well, I didn't get upset. I thought, I'm going to go clean the bathrooms and get some of this heat out of me. <laughs> Our pastor comes in and said, who made this cake? I thought, Lord, are we ever going to end this story on this cake? <laughs> and somebody said, Sister Carney, well, bring her in and let's congratulate her. <laughs> One of five people got into that cake. You understand? You say, is this the gospel? This is the gospel truth. Yes. I tell you, then comes Mother Heaven. This is how we walked in the spirit. She's, just, she's about 75. Honey, it's a pretty cake. She said, did all these cakes come from the same recipe? Oh. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? Can't hide. The Holy Ghost is everywhere. Yeah. And he wants you to see. And we didn't play games with these things. And I wanted to say, why did you ask me that? I said, well, we all worked on it together. Don't lie. Don't fight. It's just we did. Five of us got it together. The lady screaming in the parking lot, the two artists, <laughs> myself. And Ruth says, well, it's all right. I'm fasting. I always fast on my birthday. <laughs> well, we all enjoyed the cake. And I never baked another cake <laughs> for anybody's birthday. But I got through and I said, Lord, I went to my room the night. What was this all about? He said, witty inventions. Wow. How many would like to hear the Lord say anything yes. to you? Come on. Anything. Yes. Anything. Yes. anything. I don't care. Hallelujah. Just tell me he likes ice cream. I don't yes. care. Just yeah. listen to his yeah. words. Yeah. And this is why we just, you know, sometimes I feel the wine wobbling around inside of me. Yes. He said, what are you talking about? Yes. Because you've been listening. You're hearing his thoughts. You're feeling yes. his nudges. Yeah, You're seeing good. him work in your life. You don't have to listen to me. I know these messages are wonderful, and I'm not down on anybody. I'm not looking for my destiny, honey. I've been walking in from the day that I got saved. Amen. Did anybody Amen. agree with me? Amen. Have you suffered a few things? Come on. Have you suffered? Has anybody suffered a few things? Well, then you're reigning with him. 
you have some authority to speak some things into existence. Amen. I know I'm taking time, but I want you to learn how to hear the weight of glory on your voice and feel the majesty of the king when you speak. Yes. I want you to feel that glory and that authority on your voice. Yes. Not everybody has it, so I'm trying to explain to D about the a few more people came, and I can see him if you want to look at it. We got your letters if you ate. Alfreda's back there. Anyway, you can give your name and ask D. I mean, don't do it while we're shouting praise and prophesying. Find the timing on it. Because I want you to have your returns. If you gave over if you gave over a hundred, I have to write you a text letter. I have to give you a text letter, okay? If you want to claim it. But you learn how to grasp that moment. Cherish that moment. Are you listening? Yes. Cherish that moment. It's, it's slipping away. He's got another moment for you. So you're coming to a higher place. Amen. I don't have a, if you want, you need to give her your address if you don't mind. Because if you want to claim that, okay. But God is God. And God is good. <laughs> All the time. Amen. So I'm moaning over it. I'm going to help some of you right now to forget to pass. I woke up two mornings ago. I'm God conscious every morning, all the time. Amen. I thought, uh-oh, he's not hearing from me. I better do something. And I, I mean, God, I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, come on, get some grit in there. I love you, Lord. You're the best friend I ever had. Yes. Glory to God. And it's just, I'm half asleep. And I said something to the Lord. I can't tell you the details. It was something my mother did. It wasn't bad, but she could have made a better decision about something. I said, Lord, why did my mother do that? I thought, where did that come from? Why am I wide awake all of a sudden? You understand? I wasn't really fussing with the Lord. It just came up because God wanted to deal with it and get rid of it. Amen. Uh, okay? And all of a sudden, I saw the biggest angel you've ever seen. Oh, wow. He had wings that were like an umbrella on his back. Wow. Yeah. They just kept going out and billowing behind him. The presence of the Lord was so real in my room, I didn't, I forgot about the question. <laughs> when he showed me that vision, that situation disappeared. Amen. I would like to tell you, but it's for women only. But anyway, I'd ask the Lord why my mother would send me with my father sometimes. My father had a Venetian line business. So we could be with him, you know, he, he worked every day, so she would send if we could go with him to be with him, just spend time with our father. She was a good mother in that respect. But this situation wasn't too good because of one of the partners, that's all I'm going to say. So I used to go out and sit on the sidewalk until my father came back to protect myself. And that he was telling me that he had that angel with me all the time to take care of me. Wow. Amen. Even though I was fighting a little bit, you know, trying to overcome. He had that angel to make sure nothing ever really and everyone in this room, you're going to face obstacles. You have to, because you have to make decisions. You're going to learn to be wise, is it? Serpent. Yeah, I don't know if they're very wise or not, but the wise is a serpent, harmless as the Learn these things. How many, you had to go tell somebody something, but you didn't know how to tell them, be honest. Or something happened and you couldn't make the date, and you thought, now how am I going to explain to them and they won't get upset? He'll show you how to yes, do he it. Does. He'll give you the wisdom to, and not have this long thing that, you know, it, it nags you for years. I'm yeah. saying the whole church goes to the altar every Sunday morning and there's not anything wrong. But how about we start praying for some other people so they go to the altar all the time. How about we go out in the audience and release that exercise that he's been working on. So God will start showing you what's going on. He'll give you a picture of their life, a vision of their life. Yeah. And you, they'll get deliverance just like that. We don't need a deliverance service to cast out devils, honey. Amen. I mean, some, there are some few devils around, but when you get on fire enough, they're not going to be there. Amen. I tell you that there'll be nowhere in sight. Amen. Amen. Will not be at your house. The income tax people won't be bothering you. Come on. Amen. Everything will be put in order. I'm Amen. telling you some keys here that God is trying to teach us how to ride in the chariot with him, how to walk on the clouds. How, how not to be concerned about anything. <laughs> Look what happened to Trump. I mean, you know, well, they couldn't do anything but acquit him. What are they going to do with him? He's not going anywhere. God's got him there. Yeah. Maybe somebody had the vision. He was in jail, but the door was open, and he had the keys. Who had that vision? Did you have it? That the president was in jail? 
You, you did. It was in jail. But the door to the jail was open and he was holding the key. <laughs> you can't hold it. I want to send that to Washington so bad. <laughs> yeah, really. We came to prayer two weeks ago and this the Republicans was here. You couldn't find the parking place. Yeah. Yeah. So this wow. man came walking up beside us. We finally parked on that side. We had to go up there. We had to go around the building. But God ordained that parking there. So this man is getting out and Lori says, how, how do you do, sir? And then she said, are you running for some kind of office? And he said, yes. I said, good. I said, that's, what, cause we're, that's why we're here. We're praying so you can run. He said, we all need prayer. <laughs> but it could have been just that moment he needed. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That man needed to encourage him. He was running for an office of the Republican Party. Yeah, so God's got you in there. You got the last word. Come yeah, on. Amen. Amen. I don't know what I'm saying. Right. Let him tickle you with his goodness. And you're, you're sitting there laughing and laughing, and people are wondering why you're laughing. Because God's at work. He's always at work. So I'm saying when Richard sings these, what was the song you were singing? I'm, Jesus. Ha I'm happy today. I'm happy. Well, I need to bring some balloons to church so you can grab one. And we listen. I mean real here. And the Lord told me one day when I came in out of the rain in a big church, he said, don't put your umbrella down. Go down the aisle with the umbrella up. Well, the devil's not going to tell you to do that. I danced all the way down the aisle. Like Gene Kelly, dancing in the room. Are you, are you listening to me? I'm telling you, you're all hearing from God and you don't realize it sometimes. I told you I got lost in Maricopa. I'm getting in my car. I'm leaving. And these two girls, it starts to rain. And they... They're tapping their feet, singing in the rain. I said, what? What, what are you saying? <laughs> Nothing. We just, we're singing the song. I knew they were singing to me, but I didn't know what it was all about. And I told you, I got three blocks out. I was way up in this neighborhood, and I couldn't see. The rain was so heavy. Wow. And I went, I saw a restaurant, and I ran, drove across the road, <clears throat> trying to find out how to get out of there. And they showed me what God was saying. Sing, and I'll get you out of here. Amen. Woo! You don't need all the Lord for the long conversation. Yeah. And and I didn't realize this until I'm almost on 17. I came all the way out of America. I thought, oh, God wants me to sing, and I'm going to get there with no problem. Amen. And then you know what happens? I start crying because I'm so thankful. Amen. I'm so I'm so blessed that He He was showing me, but He said to me 35 years, 40 years ago. I want you to listen to all the songs that I sing over you because I have direction. In them. And I will give you the character of many people by the song that I give you. Oh, come on. It doesn't get any easier than that. The ways of the Lord are very easy. He said, I want to bring you into an ease, into a rest. The ease of the glory. Let the glory bring forth ease. Why? Because the ease is in the heaven. And he wants to bring it down. Yeah. And it's like, you know, that thing kind of plagued me about my mother sending me with my father. But it was like I was going into the enemy's territory every time. Because he worked as a businessman. It wasn't too nice. That's all I'm going to say. And I didn't want to tell anybody. I'm just a little girl, nine years old. But God healed that thing when I saw that angel. Yeah. Come on. Come on. You just have to suddenly see when you see. The eyes of your understanding opens. And then you see what God's... He's had his hand on you from the beginning. Yes. Yes. Time. Yes. And many people get out from underneath his authority. And they don't see that thing that God wants to do. Amen? Amen. How many want to see? I want to see. Put your hands on your eyes right now. Your hands are anointed. God, thank you for these anointed hands. These anointed people. God, we thank you that... <laughs> You said, declare my glory. And Lord, we're declaring that we're going to have eyes to see. Amen. We're going to have ears to hear. We're going to have a voice to speak what thus saith the Lord. Thank you. God, you love us all with the same love. Who can understand that love? Thank you, Lord. That you know exactly how to work that love in every heart. It's all different. That your ways are past finding out. They're new every morning. Hallelujah. That's why. Every morning. 
your faithfulness is upon us. Even when we're not thinking about you and we're in a hurry. We don't know how many cars you stopped just so we could get through. <laughs> we hit the policeman so we wouldn't get a ticket. Come on. You're a wonderful God and we don't deserve all of this because we realize we should have been doing a little better. But God, you make us better. Come on. You make us better. Lord, your ways are so wonderful. We love your ways because they're in the clouds. So let the glory bring forth ease upon our lives, Lord. That we will not limit you no matter how difficult and straight the way has been. You put Paul on that street, Lord, so that he can know your ways. A great apostle. Thank you, Jesus, for those that's gone before us. That have made it easy for us. And let this day be a little day of testing. We'll see whether we've done our homework or not. We want to see your ways. Glory to your wonderful name. Your wonderful name. Praise you, praise you. Come on, let me hear you praise the Lord. I used to hear my father groan when he prayed because... He could feel, he was trying to explain to the Lord how wonderful he was. He groaned in his prayers. Yes. You got to know him like that, and then you're not worried about the heat of the day. He's got an umbrella over you. You got the water courses, the Bible says in Isaiah. I'm going to teach your children by the water courses. I'm going to cause those streams to run out from my river and catch them. Water them. Fill them. Hallelujah. How I love your name. Oh Lord. For your name is great. And greatly to be praised. Come on, see him now. Love your lovely name. Oh Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. We sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name. that every person who's come by here and I open the door for them to speak is not opening a door for a speaking place. It's God's making deposits in their lives for the glory that's here. There's a flow of it here. Matthew Gepard came here one day. How many remember that young man with CPAC? Maybe you don't remember. But he had such a wonderful anointing. He talked about how he felt the graciousness of the Lord in this room. And he'd already been told to cancel his trip to Israel. He'd never been but he came and asked me to pray for him, so we gave him the whole offering. And we prayed, and I, I didn't know he'd already been told to cancel the trip by those over him. And I gave him a word he had a legacy in Israel, and he must go. <laughs> but he'd been told, and the deadline was there at the door. He went back, and some man called him up and paid for everybody. <laughs> he went to, yes. The end of the story is not the end yet. So he calls by up. He said, listen, I went to Israel and didn't know it was going. God gave me a vision to raise up prayer warriors to go to Israel. And then the word came to several people that they want to go that their ministry was going to pay for. Woo! Get in line, my Get in line. God is ready to see who's going to call unto him. 
And now he's got this group that are going to Israel in prayer walk. And, and Lori and Steve, they need to ask you about a car. We're going to rent a car when we go. This time we're going to drive to this one. You can't drive much in Jerusalem, though. Don't drive in Jerusalem. You have to go up on the curbs for people to pass them. There's no room. But listen, you want all the blessings that come with it. He, he, he wasn't discouraged, but he was when he came by. Because he didn't know what to do. He felt the pull, but the money didn't come. And suddenly somebody listened, called and paid it all. Jesus paid it all. Yeah. But you've got to want it more than your next beer. Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Let God arise and let every enemy be scattered. Amen. Let God arise. God Amen. wants to arise. He wants to make room for you. He wants to show you his hand of mercy and plenty and full. Hallelujah. 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 I'm telling you, the ways of the Lord, you've got to open up to them. We're getting ready to get on the plane to come home from Israel. The baptismal is the last stop. So we're, when we get in our clothes, we're going to eat and then we're going to the plane to come home. And the Lord said, I want you to get in the water. I said, Lord, all these people have been baptized. I'm dressed to go home. I wasn't complaining, but I wasn't sure I heard from the Lord. <laughs> and it was there because Pastor kept saying, anybody else? Anybody else? Well, I've been baptized there twice. I just go get another dip when I feel like I <laughs> And I said, all right, Lord. I ain't left my shoes on my feet. Everything. A nice dress. Oh, 12 people got in the water behind. That's a great number. Right. I didn't think about that one just now. Well, more decisive. They were hesitant. But they figured about to go on with all my clothes they could get into. Come on. Amen. Come on. You just be the laughing stock for the Lord. <laughs> You'll still be laughing after they're frowning. Come on. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I, see that. And the Lord told Ruth, see, I, I listen to the song, What's God Saying? And Richard. And some of you, some of you were back standing up. Where are all them flags that Brother Jerry bought? Come on, he gave a lot of you an uh, Israeli flag. Don't put it in the back of your car. You carry that thing with you like a rod. Come on, pray. And if people start complaining about Israel, you tell them what they need to do. Give him God. Give him God. Bring your flags. Wave them. It's part of who you are. Jacob carried his rod with him everywhere. He had notches in it because the notches said, this happened here and that happened there. And that, that was his book he read when he had it in his hand. What he'd done for God. That's why he carried it. And you're carrying the ways of the Lord, the purpose of the Lord. The church has got to be better than just going in and hearing a few songs and putting an offering in the basket. Go in that church and shake it up with your faith. Are you listening to me? I'm not listening. I'm not trying to be funny here. I taught my sister law how to hear the voice of the Lord. And I said, now we're going to church. You're going to hear the voice of the Lord. It was in Oklahoma. And she come out and her eyes were big looking at me. I think I heard the voice of the Lord. I thought it was wonderful. She's a quick learner. I said, what did he say? He said, this church is dead, dead, dead. <laughs> I said, say that again? He said, this church is dead, dead, dead. What does that mean? I said, well, what does that mean to you? She's trying to explain. It was a Pentecostal church. He wants some activity when you come in there. Just go in, don't go in doing the same thing all the time. Put another log on the fire. Come on, get some burning time. Get a revelation while I'm talking, while you're singing. Get a vision of what your time is doing here. How many go to the doctor's office? You want a good report. You don't come out of there him telling you something bad. You got to come back again. I'm not coming back. Hallelujah. You hear what I'm saying? You have gone to hear the report of the Lord when you go to church. What you have been concerned about all day long, I'm going to say something's going to step on your feet. That preacher should have somewhere in his sermon the answer of what you've been through that day. Amen. That's what the Lord told Sister Ruth. You go in, don't study for a message, and I'll draw it from every song and testimony and everything that happens in that service when I'm doing with a crowd of people. And she never studied for a sermon, and she was in great demand all over the world. In the physical revival, the men lined up with their cards. They had 2,500 people in their church wanting her to come and preach on the living creatures. And the Lord said, don't do it. They have what they want. Go to the cornfields of America that feeds the nation and feed them. Hallelujah. 
See, we don't understand all that. How many of you are listening to me? There's things happening right now outside of this room. It's in the news of what God is doing, and we don't hear it many times. What's happening? I want to give you four points. My friend here, Sharon, brought me a book on what was it, the Israel. What was the title of that book? Israel something. And all, you remember the, the, the uh, BP gas yeah. platform that blew up in Louisiana? Yeah. Then you remember all those clouds went all up to Greenland and then it went all the way over to Europe four years ago. How many remember that? The planes couldn't fly? Yeah. Well, the smoke came from the burning down at BP. And countries all over the world had stocked in that oil. And God was boosting all of those people because they had mistreated Israel. The burning of BP, wow. the clouds up in Greenland, and the planes that wouldn't move for three days in Europe. You tell me that God can't stop and start something in a moment. I read that book and I thought, oh my goodness, I don't think I can read any more of this. Because the whole book was about people that tried to get Israel to give away our land. And what God did on that day and that moment under that precedent. Yes. So she brought it to me and I thought, my, everybody needs a copy of this. Not to be think bad, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the key to the whole earth is Israel. The key to everything. Is this, get that in your spirit, and you will want to go. You will want God to make a room for you to go. How many want to go? I wish I'd get an allotment somewhere. I'd take you down to the airport myself, put you on the plane. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. The spirit of revelation comes up on you when you go to Israel. You don't sit right away, but it comes. So you say, you're telling me, yes, I'm crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Yeah. Read everything you can about Israel. Get interested in the Bible. Go get your biblical dictionary. I'm going to bring mine. I got pictures of the woman at the well where the woman was. I got pictures of Jacob's well. I got these old pictures. And I read it. I thought, oh, these are my people. This is my family. You understand? Yeah. You, you've got to be different. Different. Yeah. And tell somebody you're different. Who are you? I'm different. Amen. <laughs> yes, I am. That is a good answer. I keep pumping you people up. I'm going to get a bigger pump. I'm saying, we, we want another revelation. Well, get yours, honey. Just think on him. He brought that angel. I can still see it. Its wings came way around it like this. Out this far. And I wanted to touch it. I kept reaching out. I'm laying on the bed. I'm trying to touch those wings. Listen, he wants to hide you under his wing. Yes, thank you. I feel his power. Thank his you for your wing. So when you're singing a song, get your birthright out of it. Yeah. This is, these songs we sing are ordered from the heavens. God is doing something in that song at that moment. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. I fell out in this church one day. I shouldn't say this church. I've been waiting for days to have a fallout. And I said, oh, Lord, don't let me be, don't let me think about people. I'm going to close my eyes. I want to feel your presence. I want to dance. I just want to rest on your operating table. Take out whatever you want to take out and put in what Amen. you want to put in. you got to see it differently, folks. Don't worry about the people hitting their heads. They probably need their head hit anyway. I'll be kinder to you. Some people, listen, I have known, and some of you won't receive this, I have known people to get hit in the head because God's trying to tell them something. Amen. Oh, yeah. He's not trying to kill you. He's trying to get the brains in the right place. <laughs> and anyway, I fell out under the bench. And four people, I thought they were going to stop the music. I thought, oh, Lord, don't want to stop the music. I'll be there. Came over and one put their head on my chest to see if I was breathing. <laughs> and it brought me out of the spirit. And I had to say, Please, let me enjoy this moment. Yeah. 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 This, honey, we're talking about a church service. We're not talking about another message. Amen. We're talking about what God is doing when you walk through that door that morning. Amen. He's got all of heaven open to tell you something that change your life for the next five years. Yeah. Yeah. Are you listening? God's Amen. pouring all this in me. On my, I wake up thinking about the Lord, and I go to bed speaking in tongues. And I wake up in the night speaking in tongues. Yes. Amen. I hear me speaking in tongues. Yeah. Hallelujah. They can't go by my house by, in their cars without something to leave it out of my house into their cars. I'm telling you, I believe this. I've seen this in the spirit. I've seen this. Mother Evelyn did it for 10 years to this house on this great street in Richmond. 
Save the people in this house, Lord. Four times a week, she put her arm out the window. Save the people in this church. Ruth goes to a full gospel businessman. They end, they come. This man comes in that house. He's a business executive. He hears Ruth. He gets converted and said, who are you people? And he came to our camp. He sold everything he had and made a deposit down on our tabernacle. Wow. From then on, he and his wife went around the world. All around the world. And he was in laughter before Rodney High Ground was ever heard of. He would <laughs> laugh. <laughs> and he'd shake his head. And he had a comb in his pocket all the time. Comb that hair. <laughs> and we didn't think anything about it. I mean, we didn't think that. We didn't make excuses. We knew he had something that we hadn't entered into yet. He said, enter my gates with Thanksgiving. Yes. Come on, he wants to get you in the cloud. Go back to the cloud. And I'm giving you words, but in these words are the power. And the, the God that's not limited. Don't limit God. Now listen, you may ask him, let me have one of those experiences. And you better be ready, because he's going to do it you don't expect it. And you'll probably be among some people that you don't want to see him. Yeah. Brother Shambach took a person to his church one Sunday and he said, Lord, don't let my mother scream and run around the church today. <laughs> College boy, went to school with. Lord, don't let her. I'm giving you testimonies like in the book of Acts. We're getting back to the book of Acts. This is what the church is all about. They had something going on. And he said, Lord, I beg of you. And he said, they sang the songs and it was almost the finish and nobody was praying. And all of a sudden he heard a war. <laughs> and here comes his mother around the church. And he gave stories with it, which he had overcome. And later, the end of the story, the man fell on his knees and started worshiping God. And he said to Brother Shane, why didn't you tell me what was going on over here? He said, we don't have this anywhere else. Or, or something's wrong. Why didn't you tell yeah. me? So my friend was on a Greyhound bus and a man sat down beside her. He was coming to Richmond. She was coming into Richmond. And he said, um, I'm going into Richmond. What are you going to do? Well, I had friends there. I need to find a lively place. Where's the liveliest place in the city? She gives him our church address. He ends up at our church. True story. He said, this is a church. She said, well, you want to know where the lively place was? She said, you'll hear good news here. And you'll drink wine you've never drank before. That's right. She never, but listen, you got to get braver, honey. Come on. Hallelujah. you got to get bolder. Are you listening to me? Yes. Hallelujah. I, I was listening. I said this the other day. I know I'm talking, but I'm filling your book with some pages here to read. I, and they were talking about all these wonderful things. Where were we? They were talking about all these wonderful things. These people were that God had done for them. I said, well, they ain't heard my testimony. Right now, Bucket gave me a day and a half for his time. A day and a half. Hallelujah. Praise he the Lord. He said, Adam, listen and talk to me. All about the living creatures. And he went and preached on it. The Ray McCall is breaking ground of 47,000 people. I don't talk about that. It just happened. A day and a half. Then he put me on his platform. I looked at 30,000 people. I'd never get a place like that again. Amen. Amen. And then Ray McCauley, they had the big church. I don't know where he heard about me and my friend. He said, I understand we have two missionaries. Missionaries here tonight from the States. Where are you? Stand up. We stood up. We didn't have a contact or no place to stay. We had just been told five minutes earlier, the lady that invited me, she couldn't take care of two people. He turned to his usher, all right, take care of these ladies, get them a car, get them a car. Wow. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. I had a chauffeur driven car. What's that big car I told you about? A limousine. A Mercedes. Hallelujah. In 12 countries, I had a Mercedes to drive me around. The Lord said, I'm going to have a car for you. If you seek me, I'm talking about seeking him till he's found. Yeah. Till he's found and he's operating in your life in full color and full dimension. Yeah. And I said to the Lord one day, Lord, do you think I would look good in red? What do you think about red? you think I'd look good in red? I'm not playing. Well, I don't really like red, but you made red. Somebody gave me that hot pink soup. Best color I ever had. Come on, you got to get a color out of that rainbow. <laughs> you say, what in the world are you talking about? I'm talking about the Song of Solomon, honey. I'm talking about Ezekiel. I'm talking about the book of Revelation. I'm talking about those ways of God that will turn you inside out. Hallelujah. And, and Sister Ruth said, 
People think they'll just die if they don't go with me. She said, they go with me one time and they do want to die. <laughs> I want to go. She put a demand on me. Yeah. You do this. Oh and I didn't know how to answer her because she never said no. She would just say, you want to go? Yeah. And it's usually right now. You know, yeah. sometimes back in suitcase. Come on, you got an anointing on you. You got wings on you. The pilot doesn't even have those wings. Come on. Amen. I'm telling you, God has put something in his power and in his goodness and in his infinite ways that he has that we barely tapped into it. And listen, if we did, I'm going to give you this last advice. You'd get up in the morning like a choo-choo train. I heard my sister <laughs> praying this morning. I was back in the gathering praying quietly because I thought she was still asleep. I didn't feel good. And I've had the flu for two weeks and I've been fighting it. I mean, ah, bah, 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 bah. Then I turned the hair dryer on so she wouldn't hear me. You know what I'm saying? Because the sounds just melt in. I'm telling you, when you want God, you don't care if every can falls off the shelf. Amen. You're going to make a greater noise of your God. Make a joyful noise. This is what Richard was saying in the beginning. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Because you have Him. You have Him. You don't have to search for Him anymore. But when you search for Him with all your heart, then you know where He is. They sang that song, Standing in the Shadows. Standing somewhere in the shadows, you'll find Jesus. And then you'll know and understand. How many know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. And you won't have to worry about what what you're going to talk about. Some of these preachers go, tell them about the experience you had in the last bathroom. I'm being honest. The best experiences are in the shower. You'll take more showers. I'm speaking prophetically. Yes. Even Benny Hinn said that. He said you get the best revelations in the bathroom. Water. Water. It's the water. Wow. Everything's about the water, honey. Water. It's the baptism. It's the river. Yeah. It's that river in that Woo! city. Amen. Come on. It's that yes. river that flows. Yes. Oh, yes. that yes. movements yes. of God in your life. Movements of God. Yes. Beautiful movements of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Let your voice begin to harmonize with heaven. <laughs> 